Let's talk about some easy ways to optimize your online privacy, even if you're a beginner that isn't that tech savvy. For one, you should use a browser that is secure and privacy respecting. The simplest browser that gives you these features out of the box without having to go through any complex configurations is the Brave browser. However, it is worth noting that Brave has recently betrayed its users' trust in the past with what was essentially URL hijacking by injecting their promo code into the URL of certain websites so that they could make a little bit more money. So it's important to keep a close eye on this Brave browser if you're going to use it and make sure that the developers never do anything like this again. But as of right now, I would say that it is the best browser that has good privacy settings right out of the box. If you're a more advanced user or you're just willing to do the extra work that doesn't require trusting the Brave team, then you should use Firefox with the ghex user.js profile to maximize the privacy of Firefox. You could also use ungoogled Chromium, which is an ongoing project to remove the spookiness from Chromium and allow its users to browse without Google spying on them. However, you should still install a couple of other add-ons to ungoogle chromium like uBlock origin now when you're on the web you probably use a search engine quite often so it's important to use a search engine that respects your privacy the one that i would recommend is duckduckgo they have a long track record of respecting a user's privacy However, DuckDuckGo occasionally has insufficient search results, depending on what it is that you're looking for. So if you find this to be an issue, you could use StartPage, which generates results from Google while having more respect for the user's privacy than using Google directly. Or if you want to take things a step further, you could use SurX, which gives you the option to use a vast number of privately hosted instances or to host your own instance. And this is probably the best way to achieve a balance of privacy and to avoid search results being manipulated, which Google, Yahoo, and other big search engines are well known for doing. Another activity that many people use their web browsers for is email. Even if you don't enjoy using email, it's still a necessary evil because most services still require either a phone number to sign up or an email to sign up for them. And obviously, emails can be much more anonymous than a phone number. But if you're going to use email, it's important to use an email provider that respects your privacy. This means that Yahoo Mail, Gmail, and Hotmail are all out because all of these services make a profit off of selling your data to advertising companies. You should use an email service like ProtonMail or Tutanota, which has been proven to have a track record of respecting user privacy. And they are both able to do this because they encrypt your inbox. So even if these companies wanted to monetize your emails and make profit off of your inbox, they wouldn't be able to do so because the contents of your inbox are hidden from them and they're only viewable by you when you sign in with your password, which decrypts the inbox for you to view it. You should also use a secure and privacy respecting means of communication for all of the other ways that you want to message people. So for instant messaging, I would recommend using either Signal or Briar. Both of these support end-to-end -end encryption, they are both free and open source, and Briar goes a step further by sending messages through the Tor network to further obfuscate the communication that is going on between the two parties. And neither of these companies store your data or your metadata. And even if law enforcement were to subpoena them, the most that they could give up is the date that you created your account and when you last logged in, since they don't keep any logs of your usage history. And both of them support end-to-end -end encryption, so there's no way for them to actually see the messages that you are sending back and forth. And both of these apps are available on a wide array of mobile and desktop platforms, 
The only real struggle here is getting your friends to use them as well, since obviously both parties must be using this app in order to benefit from all of this privacy. Now, when it comes to digital and online security and privacy, there are many layers involved, and if the layers below are not taken care of, then they can compromise the layers above. So once your browser and apps are secured or you're using a browser and apps that are secure by default, it is important to then go and secure the settings of your operating system. The default settings of most operating systems, especially mobile ones, are not privacy oriented. So on your desktop or your mobile platform, you should disable things like data sharing, location services, error reporting, usage statistics, Anything like that that sends data back to the proprietor or to an advertising company should be turned off within your operating system and your online services. And speaking of online services, you really should limit the number that you're using as well as the number of apps that you're using or that you have installed on your device because chances are you have a number of apps on your phone that you don't even use but they are still going to be collecting your data in the background when you give information to multiple applications. This goes and enlarges your digital footprint and it's giving out more information to anybody that can access this data either through hacking or through buying it from the proprietor of these apps or the proprietor that makes these apps themselves. And number seven, you should run your browsers, your apps, and your online services from a free and open source operating system that respects your privacy. As I mentioned earlier, if the layers below are unsecure, then the layers above are going to be compromised. And generally, the operating system is the lowest level software that a user would interact with. If you run a closed source proprietary operating system like Microsoft Windows or Apple's Mac OS or Apple's iOS, then you cannot be certain of the security or privacy of your operating system. And even after changing your privacy settings, because there's really no way to actually verify that these settings have been applied properly or that there isn't some hidden privacy setting that you're just unable to change. So for a mobile platform, the operating system that I would recommend is Android since it is open source. However, since Android is developed by Google, which is known for harvesting user data, it's going to be very important to change those default settings that I mentioned earlier on an Android platform. Now, if you're a more advanced user, you should consider loading a custom ROM onto your Android phone like Graphene, which is the most secure and privacy-focused Android ROM. And on your PC, of course, you should use GNU slash Linux. The distro that I would recommend to beginners is Linux Mint. Its layout is very similar to Windows. It's easy to install and it just works. And these days, the Linux ecosystem has come a long way. It has applications that are sufficient for 99% of people. So gone are the days of being unable to do image editing or video editing or gaming on Linux. It's all possible with free and open source software that respects your privacy. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember that privacy for the individual is multiplied by the number of users who have good privacy as well. So I encourage you to share this video with others so that they can maximize their privacy settings, which benefits all of us. And be sure to leave a like and tick the notification bell so that you know when new content is released. Thanks for watching.